Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us for the webinar this afternoon. We're still waiting for just a couple more folks to join, so we're going to wait another 30 seconds or so, and then we'll get started. Hang tight. Alrighty. Hello, everyone. Thanks again for joining us today. Today's webinar focuses on Action for Healthy Kids' 2018-19 School Grants for Healthy Kids grant opportunities. We're specifically going to focus on our Game On grant opportunities, so hopefully you're finding yourself in the right place. There are two of us on the call today from Action for Healthy Kids. Uh, I'll be the main presenter. My name is Heidi Milby. I'm the Director of School Health Programs. My colleague, Christina Shelton, is joining me on the back end. She'll be answering your questions throughout the webinar, pulling up a few polls for us as well. She's our field coordinator, and Christina works closely with our grant program, so she should be able to answer any questions that you have throughout the webinar. So keep those questions coming. We will reserve some time at the end to make sure we get um, some answered for the entire group. And then, of course, if we're not able to answer during the webinar, we'll make sure we follow up. We know that this webinar is really intended to kind of answer all of your questions, so uh, please don't, don't be afraid. Chime in if you have questions, and we can get them answered during the session today. A few logistics before we get started for folks that are new to GoToWebinar. Uh, once you're linked in, you will see that control panel. It's usually on the right-hand side of your screen. You can dial in on your telephone or on your computer. Everyone is muted uh, to avoid that static and background interference. So if you do have a question, make sure that you use that dialog box at the bottom of your control panel. That's where you can type in your questions as we're going along, and as I mentioned, Christina will get them answered throughout, and we'll have some time at the end of the webinar. We are recording the webinar, and we'll send a link to the recording, as well as all the links that we reference in the slides within two to three business days, so you guys have that for your reference. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Action for Healthy Kids, give a little bit of background, especially for folks that are new to us, um, and then we'll, we'll move on to talking about our school grants for healthy kids opportunities. I will briefly mention all of our grant opportunities, but then of course we're going to spend most of the time today talking about those Game On grants specifically. These Game On grants are associated with our Game On program, so I'm going to cover briefly what that Game On program is and how that can support your grant application and then your grant you know, if you are awarded. And then later on we'll discuss project ideas, how to apply, important deadlines, and give you some tips for applying. Uh, and then as I mentioned earlier, of course, uh, we'll have that time uh, for questions and answers at the end of the webinar today as well as throughout. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So first, a little bit about of action, a little bit of background about action for healthy kids. So our vision is a world in which every kid is healthy, active, and ready to learn. Our focus is on fighting childhood obesity, undernourishment, physical inactivity by helping schools become healthier places. We have a network of folks all across the country. These are families, teachers, students, school and community leaders, school wellness experts, really anyone who's invested in fighting this problem of childhood obesity. Uh, so these folks have really banded together to create healthier learning environments for our children. And ultimately, we, we truly believe that everyone has a role to play in ending the nation's childhood obesity epidemic, and we believe that our programs, tools, and resources help make that. You can see here our goal is to create school communities where children learn how to make healthy choices from the minute they walk in the front door to the minute they leave at the end of the school day. We were founded in 2002 by former Surgeon General David Thatcher, and today we have uh, more than 130,000 members and constituents in our network. We also partner with dozens of associations and organizations at the national, state, and local level. So I encourage you to think about, as you're considering your grant opportunities, how can you apply for a project that's really going to help you make sure that students can make those consistent choices from the minute they walk into that building to the minute they leave at the end of the school day. What's happening in your hallways, in your office, and how does that support or contradict what's happening in the classroom or on the playground? Uh, these are the kinds of things that are important for us to think about as we, as we consider what kinds of messages we're sending to our, our children. And hopefully gr these grant opportunities can help you reinforce consistent messages around nutrition and physical activity. 
So while health, of course, is in our name and, and we focus on health, we know that our work goes far beyond improving the health of kids. We know that kids who, have, who are healthy have better success academically. This is what we call the learning connection. And I mention this because our school grants are really uh, much more than just making kids healthier. They're also helping kids be better equipped to learn. So for example, we know that kids that eat, who eat better achieve academically. Studies show us time and time again that undernourished children tend to have low energy, they're often irritable, they have difficulty concentrating. If you're a classroom teacher or a school staff member, you probably see this every day for students that, for example, don't come to school having consumed breakfast. We also know that students that don't eat better score lower on vocabulary, reading comprehension, and math tests. So this definitely has a strong connection to learning. We also know that kids who move more achieve academically. So if you take a look at these brain scans, some of you may have seen these before, you can see that the left brain looks quite different than the right brain. So the left brain is an aggregate image of multiple students after 20 minutes of sitting quietly. So as you can see, the brain is what we call cool. It's blue, there's not really a whole lot of activity happening there. However, if you look at the brain on the right-hand side, you see a warmer, more active brain. It's clear that there's a lot more brain activity happening in this particular image. And the brain on the right-hand side is after 20 minutes of walking. So this is a really clear picture of what's happening when we're sitting quietly for 20 minutes versus walking for 20 minutes. I find that these visuals are a really powerful way of making the case at your school that regular physical activity at school is important in helping students focus on our work. We hear this time and time again from grant-funded schools that have seen improvements in behavior and have seen improvements academically as a result of some of their physical activity initiatives. So keep this in mind as you plan your grant project. Have conversations early with your school staff and administration to make sure that they're supportive of your work and understand that what you're doing is more than just improving kids' health, but it's really about helping them succeed in the classroom as well. So enough about us. Uh, we want to hear a little bit about you. So Christine is going to pull up a poll at this time. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So how would you describe yourself? Are you a school staff member, school district staff member? parent or caregiver, community member, or you work for a community organization, or did we just totally miss the, miss the point and you are something else entirely? Okay, we've got about 70% in so far. Go ahead and get the last few votes in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And it looks like about 41% of us are a school staff member, 25% a district staff member, community member comes in at 19%, and then parent uh, or caregiver or other come in 6 to 9%. Thanks, everybody. Great, awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Christina. Uh, so a quick note, I just wanted to let the parents or caregivers know on the phone, uh, those 6% of you, that we do offer our Parents for Healthy Kids grants. There's a webinar tomorrow that talks in more detail about those grants. So um, just take, take note of that as well in case that's an opportunity for your school. Okay, super helpful. We're going to do one more poll before we move on. Um, has your school ever applied for an Action for Healthy Kids grant? So yes, we've applied for a Game On grant. Yes, we've applied for a breakfast grant. Yes, we've applied for both. No, we've never applied, and I'm not sure. All right, so far about three quarters of us have voted. Just wait a few more seconds. All right, we're going to go ahead and close the poll, and we'll share the results. And great, okay, we've got about 14% of us have said yes, they have applied uh, for Game On, 8% for breakfast, and then 5% for both Game On and breakfast, which is great. Um, no, 44%, so some new potential applicants, and I'm not sure 30%, so maybe not sure if your grant uh, or your school has applied in the past for a grant funding. All right. Great, thanks guys. So for those of you that have applied for a grant in the past, I, mean, I encourage you, you know, through that question board, if you have successes or best practices or um, 
ideas for other folks on the call, go ahead and enter those in there. And as we do questions and answers later on, uh, Christina can share out some of those for folks that are new to the grant program. Great, thanks. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about our 1819 grant opportunities. So um, first we'll talk about all of our grant offerings um, just briefly, and then we're gonna dive into the game on grants specifically. So all of our grant offerings, those grants range from $500 to $3,000. We will award grants to K through 12 schools, parent groups like PTOs or PTAs or other parent committees and school health teams. And unfortunately, we cannot give funds directly to community-based organizations or other nonprofit organizations. The exception here is if you're a nonprofit school, uh, we can award funds to your school. Um, but just uh, keep that in mind if you are from an organization that we have partnered with schools in the past where the, the grant funds themselves are awarded to the school. And then if the school's project focuses on paying a community organization to do the grant work. Um, so for example, if you're bringing in a recess provider and that's the focus of the grant, that's a different story. But in terms of who we can actually fund, it has to be a, a school or a parent group or a school health team. Also of note, uh, K through 12 simply refers to schools that serve any grades K through 12. So you do not have to be a K through 12 institution where you serve all of those grades. Uh, we do award grants to elementary, middle, and high schools. If you are an early childhood center, just wanted to note if you also serve pre-K, we can fund your school only if you have kindergarten or higher grades and the grant funds that benefit that population. So if you are an early child care center and you're looking for grants specifically for your pre-K population, unfortunately, we're not able to award you that grant. However, if you're applying for pre-K, K and one, for example, we can, uh, we can award you that grant because those funds will benefit kindergarten and older. So if you have more questions about that, uh, definitely let us know. Okay, so we have um, several different types of grants. We have our breakfast grants. There are two opportunities for our breakfast grants. We have a universal and alternative breakfast opportunity. Universal means that your school offers breakfast at no charge to students. Uh, this is a school level grant, so any individual school can apply. And then we also offer a district breakfast grant where a school district can apply on behalf of five or more schools within the district. So we award funds to the district uh, to implement breakfast in those designated schools. So if you're interested in learning more about our breakfast grant, uh, we did host a breakfast grant webinar yesterday. Hopefully you were able to attend if you were interested, but we uh, did archive that webinar on our website. So you can certainly access the recording and get more information there. In addition to our breakfast grants, we do offer physical activity and nutrition grants. Of course, you know that Game Mom grants are one of those grant opportunities. As I mentioned earlier, we also have Parents for Healthy Kids grants. So both of these grant types, uh, we require schools to apply for a project that includes a nutrition and a physical activity component. The Parents for Healthy Kids grant also requires a parent leader as well as a school level co-lead. So for the parents and caregivers on the, the call, um, if you're interested in leading a grant, uh, those might be a nice option for you as well. And it's critical to note here that although these parents are called Parents for Healthy Kids, any family member or person in a parent type of role can apply for these grants. So aunts, uncles, grandmothers, foster parents, uh, other individuals supporting and champion, champion, championing for a healthier school environment in their school can also apply. So know that it's an inclusive term. And then the Game on Grants require a school level applicant as well as the names and commitments of the principal, PE teacher, and food service manager. So keep that in mind that uh, if right now you don't have the support of your principal, PE teacher, and food service manager to make sure that you connect with those folks, let them know that you're applying. If you need to use some of the, those learning connection terms to really get them on board, um, start that conversation now. But we do ask when you submit the application that these folks are aware and are supportive of the fact that you are applying for a grant for your school. Only specific states are eligible for Game On and Parents for Healthy Kids grants. We'll cover the eligible states for Game On grants specifically in a few slides, as well as discuss more details about those grants. One other thing I do want to point out is that schools cannot apply for both Game On and Parents for Healthy Kids grants. Schools must choose one of the physical activity and nutrition grants for which they'd like to apply. However, schools can apply for a breakfast grant and either a Parents for Healthy Kids or Game On grant. So hopefully that's clear. Again, if you have questions, please enter them in the question box. So if any of these other grant opportunities interest you, I encourage you to Check out those webinars. As I mentioned, the Parents for Healthy Kids webinar is tomorrow and you can learn more information at that time. So I wanted, before we talk about the grant details, just to share a couple of grant impacts. These impacts were shared with us just a couple of months ago from schools and I think it provides a really nice 
a way of kind of visualizing the impact of some of these grants in our funded schools for this year. So the first uh, quote you see here is from a PE teacher in Louisiana who says, it is awesome to see the students utilize equipment purchased with this grant during recess. Kids are cooperating and collaborating with one another while participating in vigorous activity. Behavior problems have also decreased. So I think what's really exciting about this is of course, the intention was to get kids more active at recess, the school is seeing that, but they're also seeing a lot of other benefits that behavioral issues are de decreasing. And this is not uncommon. We see this in a lot of our grants, particularly those that focus on classroom physical activity breaks in recess. So it just, uh, I think, goes to show that there are so many great impacts that go beyond health impacts with these grants. And then another from a school staff member in Illinois. The students love participating in the healthy snacks. Each week, new fruits and vegetables are introduced to the students. They are visibly excited and continually ask when the next sampling is coming. So lots of excitement comes out of these grants. Uh, it's a really great, great way for students to try new things, particularly around new physical activities and new um, healthy foods. And then just a couple, of mo a couple more. I love this one from a parent in Florida. My son loves plants, thanks to you. We've even started a garden at home so he can grow fresh fruits and vegetables. So I think this really emphasizes the school home connection potential with these grants. As you'll see, one of the grant requirements is that you share information with parents about the work you're doing as part of the grant. And of course, ideally, we want this to translate into healthier habits at home, like it did with this particular parent. And then finally, from a student in Ohio, with the new materials that we have received, we are able to have other classes. Yoga, Zumba, and wellness classes are something that is really cool. We can try new exercises that were not offered before. So this comes from a middle school student was really excited about some of the new offerings that came as part of the grant. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a sense of some of the projects that schools have done. We're going to talk about more projects later on, but also uh, hopefully inspires you to kind of think about what is what could be the impact of your grant that could go above and beyond you know, simply implementing a project. So uh, I mentioned I would tell you a little bit about our Game On program, which is associated with our Game On grant. We've been talking a lot about Game On. Um, so this is our signature program at Action for Healthy Kids. The Game On program was developed to really support school staff, students, and families in incorporating healthier food choices and physical activity into the school environment with the ultimate goal of creating a health-promoting school. So based on our work with schools, we know that schools can go from starting a brand new school health team to getting nationally recognized as a health-promoting school in about three years or less. However, it doesn't matter where your school is starting with your school wellness initiatives, whether you're just starting a school health team, whether you've been implementing wellness initiatives for years, Game On is really intended to serve as a tool to meet you wherever you are, to provide you with resources and ideas to continually enhance your wellness programming. It can also be used to complement other programs your school might already have in place. It's really designed to be kind of a one-stop shop for school wellness, and I'll explain what that means here in a moment. So Game On is a six-step process when schools receive a grant from Action for Healthy Kids, they go through each of these steps of Game On as a way of really uh, being strategic and sustainable in their school health initiatives. So the first step focuses on gathering a school health team where uh, schools identify volunteers from school staff, parents, to community members to serve on a team. We recommend that you include at least five members on your team to make sure that you have the capacity to implement your initiatives and your grant funded projects. So if awarded, we'll ask you to identify the five members of your school health team, and we'll work with you throughout the year to make sure that you're able to meet regularly and work with your team to implement the project so it doesn't fall on the shoulders of just one person. So keep that in mind now, who is on your team, who will support you in implementing the grant if awarded. The second step focuses on assessing and tracking progress. So what we ask funded schools to do is complete the school health index to identify areas of needed improvement. Uh, so this, uh, this is being asked for you to complete it at the beginning of the grant and at the end of the grant so that we can kind of see were there any improvements made throughout the course of the year. Uh, so a way that you can kind of think about this now is, you know, have you ever done a school health assessment? Ask around to figure out, you know, what do you know, uh, where you need to improve, where you're successful. You can always access our school health index online in our current portal. So if you'd like to go ahead and complete the school health index now, you're more than welcome to do that. And that, of course, will uh, count toward your uh, deliverables later on if funded. The third step focuses on creating and implementing an action plan. So we know that a clear action plan serves as a roadmap for school health teams because it outlines priorities and goals. 
So after, re after completing the School Health Index on Action for Healthy Kids is System, you receive an auto-generated action plan that provides recommendations for how you can use Game On to improve upon certain areas based on your assessment results. Uh, what we, we do with funded schools is we encourage them to use that action plan to add additional items to their action plan based on their grant-funded projects so that they're focusing not only on where they can improve based on their assessment results, but where they, they need to improve based on their funded projects. So those are the first steps of first three steps of Game On. The last three steps are uh, focused on really implementing activities. So step four is is focused on all of the best practices in physical activity and nutrition that schools can implement. Uh, so we have a Game On School Blueprint where you can identify activities and resources that line up with your school's needs. Within step four, there are more than 80 eat better and move more game on activity ideas. And again, these are resources, ideas, tips for implementing them at your school. So I'll show you a few examples of these in just a moment so you can get a sense of what I'm talking about. Step five focuses on engaging families and community. So we know that partnering with parents and volunteers and community organizations can promote consistent messages and can also give you the capacity you need to get stuff done. So all awarded schools will be asked to host an Every Kid Healthy Week event in April to engage parents in the local school community and school wellness efforts. And again, we're gonna talk about this in a little bit more detail in just a little bit. And then finally, step six is the celebration point. So after schools go through all of these steps of game on, step six is really about celebrating your efforts. Um, by the time that schools get to step six, it's an opportunity to get recognized, nationally recognized for being a health promoting school. So a school that really supports students and staff and healthy behaviors. Uh, so that's what step six is focused on in the Game On program. You can see here, this is kind of a visual of the Game On program. It's intended to be a cyclical cycle where at the beginning of every school year, schools start over at step one to make sure that they have a solid team in place and they kind of work their way through each of the six steps. I had mentioned the school blueprint earlier. You can see that on your screen where, for example, if you're a classroom teacher and you're looking for ideas to be healthier in the classroom, you can go to step four, click on the classroom, and find lots of ideas for what you can do as a classroom teacher to improve physical activity and nutrition in the classroom. So I'm gonna quickly just show you how to access Game On. It's buried a little bit in our website. If you go to our website, extrahealthykids.org, you'll see we have this school, Tools for Schools tab. That's where all of our resources for schools are located. You'll notice that Game On program is the first option on the school tools for schools tab so if you click on game on it's going to take you to the main page of game on and you'll see on the right hand side this is where all of the steps of game on are that i just mentioned so for example if you're looking for more resources on how do i build a solid school health team or you know how do i tell my principal what to do when he or she is serving on the school health team you can click on step one and you'll get a bunch of ideas and resources for how to do that Alternatively, you can go directly to step four, which again is where all of the activity ideas are located. And, and that's where our school blueprint is located as well. So um, you'll see here that if you did, for example, click on the classroom, you'll see a whole list of eat better activities that take place in the classroom and move more activities that take place in the classroom as well. Here's a few examples of some of the eat better activities you'll find in Game On. So as you can see, some of these activities may relate to your grant project idea. So uh, they can provide you resources for taking action, tips for success, resources to help. So I encourage you as you're kind of thinking about what your grant project will be, check out Game On, see if there's an activity that's related to your grant project and explore it a little bit to see if there are any other ideas or resources that you can use to beef up that particular project before you apply. And then you can see uh, move more activity examples uh, again, these are just a list of a few of the physical activity focused activities that are part of Game On. We will share a full list of Game On activities in the follow up email so you can reference it as you complete your grant application. And again, it's a great way to kind of round out your application or even just get ideas to apply if you're not quite sure exactly what you might want to focus on as part of your grant. Okay, so more about our Game On grants themselves. So our Game On grants, as I mentioned earlier, do require a physical activity and a nutrition component. Schools can receive up to $1,000 grants in funding with $500 grants being offered for schools that have been previously funded. 
The grant application will ask you to submit a project idea, however, for $1,000, regardless of whether or not you have been funded before. Uh, very often, uh, there are cases where we can award a previously funded school the full $1,000. So uh, keep that in mind that your project really should focus on something that can be accomplished with $1,000. Most schools will receive that full amount. So as I mentioned earlier, these grants are intended for schools. So we ask all applicants to identify the names of their principal, PE teacher, food service manager to show their support. And then when awarded, we'll ask schools to identify their five-person school health team to lead the project. So again, it doesn't fall on the shoulders of one person. So I encourage you now to be thinking about who that team is or will be, and I encourage you to involve them in the application process so they're aware of what the grant entails. Specific states are eligible for Game on Grants. You'll see those listed on your screen. If your state is not on this list, but you're still interested in applying for a physical activity and nutrition grant, Check out the eligible states for our Parents for Healthy Kids grant opportunities. There are many more eligible states for our Parents for Healthy Kids grant opportunities uh, due to the funding uh, behind those grants. So I encourage you to check those out if you are not finding that your state is on this list. So when you apply for a Game On grant, we'll ask you to specify your physical activity and nutrition strategy. So please do your best to classify your project within the strategies provided. You can see them on your screen. We do include an other category, but as you can see, these strategies are quite comprehensive. Uh, our Game on Grants essentially fund every best practice in school nutrition and physical activity. And again, schools are required to select one of each, so be thinking about that as you craft your project idea. We will send a link, uh, a PDF link with these Game on strategies with a little bit more explanation if you need some clarification or resources for what each of these strategies entail. If there is a game on activity that's associated with one of these strategies, we'll also link out to that on that document. So again, it's a really great place for you to get more ideas and resources for your uh, grant funded project. So a few examples of initiatives that we have funded in the past. These are ideas for you as you craft your grant project idea. We fund a lot of new equipment. So for PE, for recess, for classroom physical activity breaks, um, we often see that Schools like to put together kits for classrooms around indoor recess or physical activity breaks. And sometimes if, if you're not able to fund enough kits for an entire school with a $1,000 grant, schools will have a rotational system where kits are rotated between grade levels so all students get access to the resources. We also see sometimes schools will paint their blacktop with games such as Hopstop, Foursquare, et cetera. We've had schools do new playgrounds. Um, so the $1,000 grant might contribute to a larger amount of is raising for a new playground. Walking trails with fitness stations are really popular. Even if you're only able to add one or two fitness stations each year, it's a great way to kind of build that out in a sustainable way. We've had schools build basketball courts or soccer fields. Stability balls or wobble chairs for the classroom as a way of getting more movement during the school day as a common uh, grant project idea as well. We've seen a couple of schools develop kinesthetic learning labs or movement rooms where, again, there's a rotational system where classrooms get an opportunity to use the learning lab so that they have more of an active learning opportunity. Related uh, fitness and workout rooms are also a common grant project idea. We see a lot of running, walking programs, yoga programs, Zumba programs. Um, there are schools that are focused, that focus on safe routes to school and use the funds to purchase bike racks or do uh, campaigns around walking school bus or bike trains. We've also seen schools that focus on doing monthly fam family fitness nights as a way to engage families in physical activity as well. So this is certainly not an exhaustive list. These are just uh, some of the ways that, that schools have in the past used grant funds for physical activity initiatives. I encourage you to think about a way to make your initiative most sustainable. So for example, purchasing equipment that can be used well beyond the grant year. Uh, making infrastructure changes so that students are able to get regular physical activity on an ongoing basis, as opposed to spending funds on things like incentives that at the end of the grant year, uh, there, there will be no uh, incentives or money left. So be thinking about that uh, as you craft your idea. In terms of some nutrition initiative examples, we've seen schools do Rethink Your Drink, where they really focus on healthy beverages such as water and teach students about the amount of uh, sugar that are in popular beverages. Nutrition education in the classroom and cafeteria is extremely common for schools. Oftentimes nutrition education doesn't get a lot of funding, so this is a way to purchase 
curricula and resources and really focus efforts on that. And doing nutrition workshops for students and families, again, a way to engage families in this work. Uh, we see a lot of healthy food taste tests that take place during lunch or as a healthy celebration or healthy reward for students. Uh, in the cafeteria, we've had schools use funds to purchase menu boards or decorative bowls, signage for the cafeteria. Uh, for those that are familiar with smarter lunchrooms techniques, this can be a nice way to use funds to make sure that the cafeteria is really promoting healthy, the healthiest options and encouraging students to participate in school meals. We've seen schools develop healthy fundraising and celebration policies and use funds to implement those policies. And then, uh, of course, school gardens, salad bars are another way that schools have used funds. So again, this is not an exhaustive list, but this is uh, kind of gives you a little bit of a sense of some of the things that schools have focused on in the past. So again, if you're a previously funded school, I encourage you to, in the dialogue box, let us know what you've worked on, what you've really enjoyed. If you have a creative idea, you might want to share with the group and we'll share that out at the end. Okay, so let's talk through the game on, on grant goals. So another way to think about these goals are these are the deliverables of the grant. So by the end of the grant, this is what we are asking your school to do. Focusing on physical activity, we're asking your school to do at least one of these things. One, increase physical activity minutes. Two, increase the percentage of students participating in physical activity. Or three, increase the percentage of time that students are engaged in moderate to vigorous physical activity. So for example, if you have 15 minutes of daily recess right now and you want to increase to 20 minutes of daily recess, that's a way of increasing minutes. For a percentage of students participating, perhaps you have a walk-in club, but you want to expand participation to include additional grades. Uh, that's a way to increase the percentage of students participating in physical activity initiatives. And then in terms of engagement in moderate to vigorous physical activity, an example here might be, you know, if in physical education you don't have enough equipment for all students to be active at the same time, by purchasing more equipment, you're able to make sure that more students are active at the same time, which increases moderate to vigorous physical activity. So there's a couple of examples there. The expectation is not for you to increase all three of these things. It's common for schools to focus on multiple pieces, but at a minimum, we're asking you to do at least one of these three things as part of your physical activity initiative. In terms of your nutrition initiative, similarly, we're asking you to do at least one of these things. So as a result of your nutrition initiative, we want you to either increase knowledge about healthy foods and beverages, increase student consumption of those healthy foods and beverages, improve attitudes around healthy foods and beverages, or improve your school nutrition environment. Um, so again, a pretty comprehensive list. We, we're not asking that you do all of these things, but do at least one of them. So uh, as a result of nutrition education, for example, you might increase knowledge. As a result of healthy food taste tests, you might increase consumption and improve attitudes around healthy foods. Perhaps they're trying something they've never tried before and now they like it because they've tried it. And in terms of the school nutrition environment, by implementing policies or by improving the cafeteria, perhaps you're painting a mural in your cafeteria to make the cafeteria a, a more pleasant space for students to consume meals is a way of improving the school nutrition environment. So again, just a couple of examples. Uh, make sure that your nutrition initiative increases at least one of these goals. A couple of other goals, as I mentioned earlier, we do ask that you provide information to students and parents on the importance of physical activity and nutrition. So schools have done this a variety of ways. This could be through a newsletter or school website, social media, at-home assignments where students are completing them at home with their families, hosting events like health fairs or family fitness nights for parents who attend or families who attend are able to get information. So the goal here is really to make sure that families are aware of your efforts and they have information about how they can support healthy habits at home. Another goal is to work toward becoming a health promoting school. So if you'll recall, that final step of game on is to get recognized as a health promoting school. So health promoting school is a school that strives to provide a healthy environment for students, staff, and families. Um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we do ask you to complete the school health index, which can help your school figure out whether or not you're a health promoting school. After schools complete that assessment, we tell them if they're health promoting or if they still have a few more improvements to make. There are also a couple of national school health recognition programs, for example, through the United States Department of Agriculture and through the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, there's each a program where your school can actually submit an application to get nationally recognized for being a health promoting school. 
throughout the grant period, we'll provide information to funded schools about these opportunities. We'll support you if you're interested in applying for one of those national grant opportunities. But again, the idea here is to make improvements so that in the end, by the end of the school year, your school is doing uh, many best practices around physical activity and nutrition to have a healthy environment for students. And then finally, uh, we ask that schools host an Every Kid Healthy Week event in April 2019. If you're not familiar with Every Kid Healthy Week, it's, a, it's on the uh, National Health Observances calendar. It takes place the fourth week of April every year, and it's really intended to uh, focus on the nation's childhood obesity epidemic and its solutions, nutrition, physical activity, and health-promoting school programs. So during this week, schools host events like health fairs, uh, they renovate school playgrounds, they paint healthy murals on, on schools, they work in the school garden, they might do a taste test, all sorts of events and activities, uh, but they take place during this week as a way to celebrate Every Kid Healthy. We are hosting an Every Kid Healthy Week webinar tomorrow for folks that are interested in learning more or even interested in hosting a webinar this week. So you can find more information about that webinar on our website, uh, but again, this is something that we ask all funded schools to host at the end of the grant period as a way of celebrating their efforts and engaging families in the local community and health and wellness. Okay, so uh, those are the goals of the grant. We do have a couple of reports that we ask schools to submit and I, I like to outline those here so um, all, all interested applicants are aware of them. So we will ask if you are awarded that you submit a signed copy of a terms and conditions which is a way of just kind of formally accepting the grant award. Um, this also just tells us that you intend to implement the grant that you applied to implement. Um, we, when we ask you to submit your terms and conditions, this is when we'll also ask you to identify those five folks that are on your school health team. We also, as I mentioned earlier, ask schools to complete that school health index assessment at the beginning and at the end of the grant. At the end of the grant, all you have to do is update responses that have changed. You don't have to do the entire thing all over again. Uh, so uh, most of that work takes place in the beginning when you submit your initial school health index. We also ask schools to complete a brief midterm report and submit two photos in the middle of the year. We use this information to provide your school with support. So if we see there's an area where you could use additional support or might be struggling, we, um, we help you in that way. And then we also use this information to report back to our funders who are funding the Game on Grants. We ask schools to complete an Every Kid Healthy Week event survey. Again, this is a very brief survey just to tell us about what you're planning to do for Every Kid Healthy Week, and if you need any resources, support, volunteers that we can uh, connect you with to support your event. And then finally, we do ask schools to complete a final, a brief final report and submit three photos as well at the end of the year, uh, just to kind of tell us, you know, how did it go, wrap it up, and again, we share that information back with our funders uh, so we can hopefully secure more funding to continue to provide grants. So all of these things are our state coordinators who work closely with schools will let schools know, you know, as these deadlines come up. So there's no need to write them down now, but just something to keep in mind that we will ask you every few months uh, to kind of report back on what you're doing in your school so that we can kind of measure success and support you along the way. So a couple of things that we're looking for. These are examples. Um, so for example, our school is building a walking trail and hosting quarterly health fairs along the trail to promote healthy eating and encourage families to use the trail. Again, this is just, just an example of something we would fund, but I want to note that uh, the reason we, we would fund an initiative like this is because one, it includes physical activity and nutrition, and two, it's ongoing. So those health fairs are quarterly, so it's a regular ongoing nutrition activity. Um, and then of course, having the walking trail as a sustainable physical activity initiative. So I mentioned this one because it has an ongoing physical activity and nutrition initiative. Just to give you one other example of something, uh, again, that has an ongoing nutrition and ongoing physical activity initiative, every class will do a monthly taste test and physical activity breaks three to five times per week. So you can see that this grant project focuses on both nutrition and physical activity, and it's a regularly occurring uh, initiative as opposed to one taste test during the entire year. And then finally, our school will do daily morning announcements about healthy eating and have weekly trivia and raffles about the information shared. We will also host monthly family fitness nights for students and parents. So again, you can see that the school is focusing on both nutrition and physical activity and they are ongoing uh, initiatives. So just wanted to give you a sense, again, these are uh, just examples 
of things. The key here is make sure that one, you're including both a physical activity and a nutrition initiative, and two, they are ongoing uh, to make sure that you know, students are receiving consistent messages throughout the year as opposed to a one-time event that uh, they may forget about. A couple of examples of what we're not looking for. So these are nay, uh, nay examples. Our school will purchase PE equipment. Why? We like, we like PE equipment, we'll fund PE equipment, but you can see clearly this is missing a nutrition initiative. So if this particular school added a new, an ongoing nutrition initiative, it would be a great project to fund. Second, our school will start a running club and do a taste test during our Every Kid Healthy Week event. Again, sounds great. The nutrition initiative isn't ongoing. We know that if we just do one taste test a year, we're not gonna see a strong impact on students. It would be much better to do more regular taste testing or nutrition opportunities so that students can really build knowledge, skills, and improve attitudes throughout the year. And then finally, our school will purchase and train teachers on a nutrition education curriculum, and we'll do a family fitness night. Uh, we love the nutrition side of things uh, because all students are getting training, it's sustainable, one family fitness night, however, isn't really going to uh, have a strong impact on physical activity for students. So we'd really like to see an ongoing physical activity initiative um, that has uh, a little bit of a stronger impact. So again, just a couple of examples to reinforce the fact that we want both a nutrition and a physical activity initiative and to make sure that those initiatives are ongoing. So a few steps to apply. First, Complete the paper application with your school health team. I mentioned this, uh, one, because it's really important to collaborate with others to make sure that they're gonna support your project. Um, and two, it's helpful to complete the paper application so that when you go to our online portal with, where the application will be submitted, it's quick and easy to submit it online. Check your character counts. We do focus on character, not word count. Um, many of the questions do have character count limits and you'll get an error if you exceed the character count limit. Uh, so make sure that you check and pay attention to those. Uh, next, write the application of this, as if the person reviewing it knew nothing about the issue. We wanna make sure that we fully understand your project. I highly recommend having an external reviewer read the application just to make sure it makes sense to an outside individual. Then you'll enter and you'll submit the grant application in our online portal. I, I will talk you through the online portal step-by-step -step in a moment. Uh, because we have this wonderful technology and this online grant Portal, we will not accept paper application. So again, I encourage you to begin entering your grant application in the portal sooner rather than later so uh, we can resolve any technical issues that might occur early on. Uh, but if you create your paper application and then go to submit it in the portal, we find that schools uh, experience uh, much less difficulty and it's a lot quicker of a process. Okay, so just to show you uh, again how to apply, I'll run through these rather quickly, but these are great slides to reference later on as you go to apply if you're a first time applicant. So you'll wanna go to our School Grants for Healthy Kids website. You can see the website there is at the bottom of the screen. There is an apply now button in the center of the screen. If you click on that, it's gonna take you to our online school portal. This is where you'll either log in or create an account. If you have issues logging in, uh, let us know. Sometimes when you hit your password reset button, the email goes to your clutter or your junk email, uh, depending on your school server. So keep that in mind, check those if you don't get a password reset. Um, otherwise you can let us know and we will um, reset it for you to make sure that you can get into the portal. Once you do successfully get into the portal, this is what you'll see, this is the home screen. You'll wanna go to my school on the left hand corner, you can see it circled in red. And this is where you'll wanna enter basic information. So if this is your first time using the portal, you know, enter, uh, you'll have a couple of things that are automatically filled out, but enter in some of the basic information uh, so you have that all in there. And then the key here is you're gonna wanna click on that circled button there that says add or manage schools. In order to apply uh, for a grant, you need to identify for which school or schools you are applying. So by clicking on that button, it will take you to this page. Uh, this is where you can, uh, in this search area, type in your zip code click search schools and it will pull up every school in our database that is within that zip code. And you'll simply check off the school that you're looking for, add it to your profile, uh, and then at that point you are officially affiliated with the school in our online portal and we'll be able to move forward with applying for a grant to that school. A couple of notes here, 
Uh, sometimes your billing address might be different than your physical address. So if you're not able to find your school using your physical address, check in with your office staff to see if your billing address might be different. Perhaps you have a PO box, uh, for example, and our system might be classifying you under the PO box zip code versus your physical address. So keep that in mind. In the end, if you can't find your school, you'll see that on the right-hand side, there's a form that you can download. Simply download that, that form. It has a few questions on it. Send it over to us, and we will manually put your school in our system so you're able to apply. When you're ready, after you're affiliated with your school, if you click on the grant section, so on the left-hand side, there's that uh, tab called grants. This is what you'll see. Uh, so you'll see that you'll have school at the top uh, for any grant applications that you have started. It'll be listed there. If you click on show submitted grants, that green button there, it'll show you any grants you have already submitted either this year or in the past. And then at the bottom, you'll see all of the grant opportunities that are available to you. So you can go ahead and click on whatever you're interested in. So obviously you're on this webinar, so we're gonna assume you're interested in the Game On grant opportunities. If you click on that, it's gonna tell you a little bit more detail about the grant opportunity. And when you're ready, you can go ahead and click on the green button to start the application uh, for your school. So when you click on that green button, it's gonna ask you what school you want to apply for. Simply use the drop-down menu to identify that school. So if you're a district person, for example, and you have 12 schools on your account, you will have to submit an individual application for each school for our Game On grant. So just pick whatever school you wanna start with, click on that school, click go and it will take you to the grant application. You'll see that the questions are in the same order as those that are on the paper application, but they're organized by tabs at the top. So you'll see that there are five tabs there. You can either navigate by clicking on each of those tabs, or you can simply fill out the information, and at the bottom of the page, it'll say next page, and you can continue on that way. But the questions are in the same order as those on the paper application, which is great for those that do the paper application beforehand. Make sure you save frequently as you are doing this. Our system um, sometimes will sign out or, or, if, or a timeout, or if you lose internet connection and it's not saved, the information, information won't be saved. So I encourage you to save frequently every few questions or so just to make sure that you get your data saved in there. Again, this is another benefit of doing a paper application so you have the information there in case the system uh, does time out or your internet does go out. It's also great if you want to slowly work on your application over the course of the next few weeks. It will save your information as you go along so you can work on a few questions here and there. When you're ready, you're going to click the Submit button and you'll get this green banner once we have successfully submitted that says Grant Submitted. So if you do not see that green banner, do not trust the system yet. Um, so make sure you see that green banner to, in fact, um, ensure that you have submitted the grant. This is just a summary of steps we just covered for your reference. I'm not gonna read through this, but this is a good reference slide for you later on. If again, you need a little bit of support in identifying how to apply for a grant step by step. Just a couple of tips. I've mentioned some of these, but I'll reiterate them. Um, so make sure that you use the most up-to-date version of internet browsers. We find that Google Chrome and Firefox work the best. Internet Explorer sometimes causes issues for schools particularly if it's an older version. So if you're experiencing difficulty, first update your version of your internet browser, perhaps try it on another computer or your home computer if your school's computers are, um, are a little bit out of date. Again, make sure that you save often to avoid um, information getting lost. As I mentioned, you can move through the application by clicking on those tabs in the top. Make sure that you complete all required responses before submitting while paying attention to that character count. So it will identify if a question is optional, so make sure that you submit all required questions. If there are errors when you submit, you'll see an error box that pops up at the top of your portal. It's red. You'll have to address the error, resubmit. If there's another error, it'll pop it up, resubmit, and you'll have to keep doing that until all errors have been fixed. It can be a little bit of a tedious process, so again, I encourage you to make sure that you've answered every question before you submit, and then you shouldn't have any issues with errors. A couple of additional tips for the grant budget. So the school portal will not accept funds over the grant amount. So as I mentioned, $1,000 is what the grant amount should be. So make sure that your grant total is $1,000 so that you can submit. You can submit if it's less than $1,000. Of course, we will follow up with you to make sure that you have a budget for the full amount. So 
double check that to make sure $1,000 is what you submit. The equipment should reflect the project. So this sounds pretty straightforward, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, while your school must do a physical activity and nutrition initiative, uh, I should emphasize that you do not need to spend, spend funds equally on both. So if you find that you are able to fund your nutrition initiative in other ways, but you really need some money to go toward your physical activity equipment, that's completely fine. Make sure that you describe both initiatives in your application and then your budget can solely reflect the needs that you have around your physical activity initiative. Um, if we find that your budget is funding something that's not mentioned elsewhere in your grant application, uh, we will follow up with you to get some consistency there. So I just encourage you to you know, make sure that your budget really matches what your grant uh, is seeking and know that you don't have to spend the funds equally on your physical activity and nutrition initiative. Funds cannot be used for staffing. Uh, so I get this question a lot. Incentives can still be part of your budget, but we encourage schools to use this sparingly. When we review your budget, we are looking for a sustainable use of funds. So as I mentioned earlier, that the majority of funds will be used on something that is more than just a one-time use. So of course, if you wanna bring in a fitness instructor, for example, for your Every Kid Healthy Week, it's fine to spend some of the funds on something like that um, to incentive, as an incentive or a thank you gift for that person, but we cannot use the funds to pay for a staff member to run an after-school program, for example. Funds will be dispersed in two payments. So you'll get 65% at the beginning of the grant and you'll get 35% after the submission of your midterm report. It's fine uh, to, if you're saving all that money to make one big purchase, it's fine to save it, to spend it. But we do expect that schools are implementing grant fund initiatives during the entire school year. The reason we separate it is, is simply because um, we wanna make sure that your grant is, is throughout the entire school year and that you're consistently communicating with us throughout the school year on what you're doing uh, so that our funders uh, can be aware of the great work that you do. If your project does require more funding than our grant provides, just indicate that how you'll be funding it. So you'll have an opportunity to, to identify this in your grant application. Uh, so this is a way for you to kind of you know, demonstrate if you are getting a few thousand dollars from elsewhere for your playground rebuild, for example, that you're, um, you're not expecting the thousand dollars to cover the entire playground rebuild. And then finally, for every field that every field does require a response. So if there's any budget line that you're not using, put a zero in that and then put uh, NA, for example, in the description. Uh, just make sure that for every field on the budget that you're putting something in there, otherwise it will come up as an error and it might be a little bit confusing. So make sure that you have something in there to avoid those errors. And then just a few general tips. Um, we have created an application instructions guide to help you. So as you look at the application, if you have specific questions on various questions in the application, use that guide to, uh, to get more clarification on, on what you might need for that particular question. That guide also includes all of the information about the grant requirements um, and what's being asked of you, so it's a great resource in that way too. Uh, make sure your initiative descriptions clearly describe what your school plans to do. We ask you to include a timeline in that as well, again, to provide some more clarity for the grant reviewer. As I mentioned earlier, you can apply for both a breakfast and a Parents for Healthy Kids or Game On grant. You cannot apply for both a Parents for Healthy Kids and a Game On grant. Um, encourage you to get creative. We love seeing innovative and unique projects. Uh, keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to apply for something that's a little bit off the wall. And we really want to support your school in doing something to ensure every kid in your school is healthy. So I encourage you to develop projects that focus on as many students in your school building as possible. I also encourage you to use our state coordinators as a resource. This is a collaborative grant process. State coordinators will review applications, they'll answer questions. Um, it is a way for you to really enhance your grant application. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. Here's a whole list of what we do to support schools. So again, we'll assist you with your application, our Game On program. Uh, we have webinars, uh, so we have several coming up that we'll share with you as part of the follow-up email if you want to get some more ideas and resources for your grant. We do have a school health team discussion group on Facebook. We'll share a link as part of the follow-up where you can join that if you're interested in getting ideas from other school health teams or collaborating with others discussing challenges. We'll have monthly newsletters during the grant period to support all funded schools. And then, of course, we provide resources, materials, training, events, communication, support, anything you need to be a successful grant. As I mentioned, we have state coordinators. Most of our states do have a state coordinator. Those are their lovely faces there. Uh, we'll send out a contact list following the live session, but please feel free to reach out to these folks 
these folks are involved in the grant review. They're, they'll be involved in supporting all the schools that get funded. They're a great resource uh, for the application process and beyond. And if you don't have a state coordinator, contact us and we'll make sure you get connected with the right person. A few important dates. Uh, the most important one is Friday, April 6th is when applications are due. Uh, about six weeks later, we will award schools. We'll let schools know if they received an award or if they did not receive an award. And then I've included some of these other dates here for some of the reports for funded schools, but won't go into those uh, at this time. I know we have just a couple of minutes left. Christina, what questions have come in that are relevant for the group? Um, nothing, actually. We've, we've answered some questions on the back end, but uh, you must have done a fabulous job going over all the information, so we're good to go. Lovely, great. Well, um, if you all have questions after the fact, school grant at actionforhealthykids.org. You can see that email on the, the site is the best place to reach us. Uh, we're happy to answer those. And then just in terms of wrap up, if you want, again, to get more resources, I encourage you to follow us on social media. Lots of great things posted there. Um, and then of course, always come back to our website. We have lots of um, resources. We wanna support you whether or not you decide to apply and, and partner with you in your school health work. So thanks again for joining the webinar today. Hope that this was helpful. I hope that you'll consider applying and we look forward to reviewing your application. Thanks everyone.